sponsored by Surfshark. Have you ever been worried about hackers stealing your personal data from public Wi-Fi? Have you ever been frustrated that your favorite movie got taken off of Netflix again? Have you ever been traveling and found out that your American apps no longer work because you're out of the country? If you answered yes to any of these three questions, Surfshark may be the answer for you. Surfshark is a VPN app and a browser extension that helps you mask your identity online because public Wi-Fi, like the one at the Starbucks, is usually unencrypted. With a VPN, you can also watch more movies. For example, on Netflix, they don't have the movie City of God in America anymore, but if I use Surfshark to quickly switch my location to Brazil, boom. Like magic, the movie City of God is right there. With Surfshark, you can also use one account on all your devices at the same time. So I can use Surfshark on my phone, my tablet, my computer, everything. Click the Surfshark link in the description and enter code STEEZY to get an extra three months for free when signing up. Surfshark also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk at all to try it out. Thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. And um, now that that's out of the way, Let's, uh, let's cut to VHS. Ah. This, uh, this feels different. This feels different indeed. Nice change of pace. Shit you're making me do, bro. This is a fucking date, dude. Where's the fucking microphone? We can't be looking at each other this close, talking. You need to relax, you bro. You should rub the mic just like for like uh, just aesthetic purposes. You think too much. You think too much. Maybe if we just don't face each other, I'll, I'll, I'll be that's, turned. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, this I'll is be turned. Just a little bit too much. Well, now it looks like I like you because you're turned and I'm looking. Well, at you, you. want to be the one that that's turned? I'm gonna do this. Let's have the conversation. No, like that. Be like that. So I guess <clears throat> why when I asked you like, hey man, let's move to LA. Right. Let's let's do this whole YouTube game. Yeah. Um why did you say yeah? Because uh okay i gotta be honest you know i was gonna go on crazy jokes but i gotta be honest yeah just um, be, be honest don't don't try to don't yeah. try to say crazy stuff yeah because this, this is going on your main channel right yeah okay because usually you know like most youtubers were doing like pranks and blogs dude, this feels very sexual dude what like, you're looking at me in the eyes all right, all right. i'm gonna turn to the yeah, side yeah don't look all at right. me dude. it's just like i'm gonna turn to the and side and i can't say jokes so like uh but basically uh you know most youtubers that i've been around at that time they did pranks blogs or whatever and you put out the coronavirus apocalypse and i was like oh dude this is like a you know like a film style and it's actually very good like the jokes were there the storyline was there the angles were there and i was like oh shit this guy's actually like creative and might you know there might be some genius in there that's why but then i realized it was all fake and you're a failure so uh you know, I fucked up. I fucked up, dude, because you fell off. I, where did that steezy go? That film coronavirus steezy. I mean, that, that film coronavirus steezy because you never did part two. Like, dude, that was, I feel like that was your peak. I saw you at your peak and it was all downhill from there. What well, happened? You, you say what happened to that steezy. Who, who, who was that? Who was that steezy? That steezy that when I pulled up to your house, it was editing for 10 hours straight and wouldn't come out until they finished the edit. And all he talked about was film. I don't know what happened, dude. I mean, you still talk a lot about film. I think what happens is you're just afraid of the truth. And I don't know what that means because I think the more you learn about film, the more you realize you don't know about film. So you decided, you know what? I'm going to delay doing stuff because now I know how bad I am currently. So I'm just going to stop until I get good. And back then you were naive and you're like, oh, I'll shoot anything because I'm good at film. But the more you learn, the less you did. That's what happened. What do you think you fell off from that? You think that was your peak, the coronavirus? Steezy? I mean, well, really, I mean, at that time, like, I noticed whenever I have a project that I'm passionate about, like the coronavirus apocalypse, I'll sprint a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. Um, 
But then as soon as it's over, then I'm burnt out again because I used all my energy for like the year, it feels like. For the year? Because we tried to film part two. I had the script in it. I wrote the whole script. When, when did it get done? Oh, because And we filmed like two. Oh, yeah, that's another. Yeah. We Ooh. filmed two scenes. Um, but uh, at that time, yeah, my roommates who also needed to be in the film, they had this huge fight. And that's another thing that, that has always been a huge obstacle. People fighting on set or like people fighting that's in the crew that need to work together. And I always felt like I had to be like this middleman that had to make everybody like hug again. When that's not my job, my job was to make YouTube videos. Even in LA, like people would just always fight. People would just always fight. Even when like, you know, Phil said that thing to that one guy. Right. And he just completely had a mental breakdown. And it's like, why? You know, or I mean, even you, I don't want to put it all on Phil. Even you, sometimes you'll yeah, make I'll, people, you'll I'll ask these fighting. unnecessary questions well, start, yeah, and yeah. you'll have the filmers like, like just in this bad environment. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Later, I realized that, that I was like uh, putting people to the extreme or like on who they are. Like I basically like, who are you? Like to the extreme and I would test everything instead of like making them feel relaxed. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just like every time I tried to film something, uh, it's just people would just get mad at each other and fight. And you can't film in that. But don't you think like filmmaking, like directors go through that on set? Because there's so many people. Well, what makes YouTube different is uh, like on a film, you're, you're shooting a narrative scripted thing. Uh, in L.A., we were trying to do the whole cliche YouTube game, film vlogs, sell merch. And when you're, when you're filming vlogs, you're having you're having to kind of act like yourself and go out to the park and have fun, you know, go and play volleyball and have fun. And uh, if if people are fighting, how are you supposed to vlog and you know play yourself? Okay. Yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. Like that was a huge. I remember when we took the road trip from LA to Austin to do the whole small day big dreams merch promo thing. Yeah. As soon as we get to Austin, you know, then there's a fight, who, like a who, physical fight. Who fought? You know who fought. Yeah, did I fight? No, it wasn't you. It wasn't you. But then I had to play this dad role. Every time it's like I have to play this dad role. But I don't know. That That is the whole YouTube cliche game where later I realized I don't want to be doing that. You know, that whole format of having a crew and going and fucking around. Kind of that Danny Duncan format. Um... What, so he started it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, he was pretty much the main one that started it, like that whole mic'd up cult thing. Didn't he copy like Tom Green and other people? Well, everybody copies someone. Right. Like, uh, yeah, I think Danny got it from Jackass and Jackass got it from Tom Green and yeah. so on and so on. That's how the ins inspiration cycle works. But, uh,. No, I mean, I'm still very, very passionate about film. No, I mean, but what was your peak? You didn't tell me what you, you thought it was your peak. I think around that time when I did the coronavirus apocalypse and then also uh, setting my car on fire. Oh, those that are like my two favorite. was your peak. Yeah, th I would say those were my two favorite, favorite videos. And then I had, I, I thought since you and Phil have a lot of experience working with YouTubers, I was like, okay, let me get these guys to help me out. Right. Let me have them see my flaws and, and show me where I can, you know, they could be my third person perspective. Yeah. But moving to LA was kind of giving up film. Yeah. To do YouTube -y stuff. But we did show you all your flaws. You just didn't agree with any of them. Because I'm stubborn. They're like zero, we would move zero percent. Like with the merch, you wanted to design it all. And I was like, just hire someone who studied 10 years to design. Why are you designing it? Be making videos. And you're like, no, I got to design all the merch. And you're like, one color. I mean, eventually we, we, we got a graphic designer. But, but, even like the, uh, but even like the color, you're like, oh, you can only be blue. And we're like, no, that's not no, how no, business no, that's works. Not, that's not how, it was, uh, it was the quantity of products. I know. You guys wanted to release a lot of products no, different on the first colors. drop. You, I wanted to release just one shirt. No, but you wanted one color as well. You wanted blue only. And we're like, dude, Oh, that's people true. can pick that's different colors. That. You know, people are getting confused. Um, there was a lot of that. A lot of like, and the thing is like, the same thing that you say, like when people fighting, you can't do your job, right? 
The same with us that when the guy who's supposed to be moving rejects everything, we're like, dude, we can't, what are we doing here? If everything we tell him, he doesn't agree with it for some reason, and he throws it out the window. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I know some of it, it, it like was stupid. Like, I remember uh, we were, like, kind of shopping around merch companies to see who would be the best to go with. And the only one that kind of showed us, like, a response and an interest was Fanjoy. And you guys really wanted to go with Fanjoy. And I was completely against that. What was the reason that you gave Because it? it's Fanjoy. Like, what the fuck? So, see, now that's where I was like, okay, yeah, I'm stubborn. But uh, also, I think some of it is logical. Like, Fanjoy is where Jake Paul was selling his merch and all these, like, like David Dober was selling. And I didn't want to be in that pool. And plus, when you go with Fanjoy, you have to, at least at the time, I don't know if they changed it, but you had to have your merch on their website. You couldn't have, like, I couldn't have steezykane.com. Whereas with Crowdmade, I would be able to have steezykane.com. I would be able to organize my own website, make it look how I want it to look. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I would fight for things like that because Steezy Kane is my name, it's my brand, and I want to fight for my image. I mean, that's understandable. But, uh, it makes sense. There was a lot of, like... The thing is, that makes sense, you know but that. what you didn't realize is you needed to focus on making content. But And spending all your time on a website, you're losing creativity and focus. Because you would spend so much time on the website designs and merch, and then you'd stop making videos. I feel like I've I've said or I did everything that I've wanted to do with YouTube and I'm just simply like extremely jaded to where I don't find any fun in it anymore compared to in high school like the the amount of gleam that was in my eyes for this whole dream for doing YouTube and making money from just posting videos it's completely gone now and like that's one of the reasons why I'm shooting on VHS just to find a new way to make it fun. And uh, like, you know, looking back at two, 2000, what was it, 2020, when I was saying I don't want to be doing YouTube in five years. Um, I said that so many times during that year. And it's 2024 now. So I think like this is the last phase of YouTube. And like looking back at when I jumped off the Santa Monica Pier, at that time I was so hungry. I was in high school and YouTube was the only thing that I wanted to do. I knew exactly where I wanted to go and I knew exactly how I was going to get it. I knew I was going to jump off the pier. I didn't know for what reason. And when that day came, when I'm at the pier, I, uh, I see the girl and I'm like, bingo, it's going to be for her number. That's going to go viral. And I don't have any, I don't have any background in gymnastics. I don't, I don't have any background in bridge jumping, none of that. Jumping off of the pier was like a complete leap of faith. I remember the feeling of jumping off. I don't know how to front flip off a 50 foot bridge, but I knew like I had to do this. I don't know what's gonna happen to me. I don't know if I'm gonna get injured, mm -hmm. but I have to do this in order to make it. And it worked. I got three million subscribers over the next few years. And uh, at that time I had like 2,000 subscribers, I had nothing. Now, fast forwarding to this year, 2024, I think it's time for that next leap of faith. But this next leap of faith isn't as simple as jumping off a pier. This one is more metaphysical, I think. Like, I think I need to go against the grain because everybody's saying, if you quit YouTube, that's a dumb decision. Like, it's so dumb for you to leave this this channel with three million subscribers. You have this wonderful resource, this wonderful thing that you've built up. But I think, I, I think this next leap of faith is having to understand that I need to leave and I need to just go into something else. Because the, the, the fun is not here anymore. So when something gets hard, is the solution to quit? Is that what you're telling me? No, it's just when, when something's not fun anymore, it's just to move on to the next thing. And don't stay doing the same thing that you've always been doing because then you're just going to fucking... No, I agree with become, that. There's, become there's, a broken record. There's something to that. But the problem is you have to really look at what you're leaving and the reasons for it. Um, 
Because I mean, it's 3 million subscribers, and you can't just leave that. And I know people tell you this, but the thing is, you're, you're in a gold mine, and you want to walk away to find another gold mine? But I've been in this gold mine for so long, and I've not been able to mine any of the gold. The thing is, finding a gold mine, you just don't I've just... been here for five or seven years. It might take ten. The thing is that you can't quit. I'm not, I don't, but I, like, should people still be a YouTuber when they're, like, 10, 20 years in, in it? I think, like, if people are looking at YouTube as the end goal, they're looking at YouTube the wrong way. No, no, way. that's not the end goal. They're the looking goal, at it the wrong way. The, your end goal is to be, be financially stable. But I've been trying to do YouTube for the past, I've been trying to get back there the two, the past two years, and it's not, it's not working. So you It's quit. never worked. So the answer is to quit. Yeah. Right. But it's, it's, so it's you're not, never gonna it's, make it's, it without anybody it's anyway. It's quitting YouTube. It's not quitting in general. It's yes, dude. But think I about it. You're quitting an easy thing. That's a problem. It's not easy. It's like there's this invisible wall, but the wall is completely solid. But I have to describe this invisible wall to everybody else because I have to explain why I can't go to the other side. Yeah. How do you describe an invisible wall? But it's completely solid. Right. I can't move past it. Yeah. I don't even understand it myself. Why can't I just make these YouTube videos and make some money real quick? Here, so, so now I have a brand that wants to pay me and now I'm making a video about how I can't make videos. But I'm still doing the brand because I need, a, I need to survive. Right. But I don't, I don't have anything to say. Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't have the energy. I don't have the curiosity. And I just... I physically cannot do it. Yeah. I mean, by the way, none of this is easy. I make it sound easy, but still doing YouTube is very hard. Yeah. So, like, I understand how hard it is to go back and do YouTube. But the thing is, you honestly have no choice, man. You have no choice. That sucks. <laughs> What the fuck is getting dark, dark guys? But you I'm, don't need the glasses anymore. I apologize, guys. I'm saying the, the same shit over and over, but I've never shot a podcast during an eclipse. Oh, look, look, oh, look, shit! Yo! Yo, what the fuck? The eclipse, man. We see it.